10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack Wack Attack. Today is January 30th, and I'm really happy today, and I'll tell you why. Okay, so a couple of days ago, I wrote this post in trading. It was on Saturday, um, and it was basically... Um, recently, Rocket Fuel's gotten really overwhelming, and I'm finding it really hard to prioritize it over other things in my life, right? So I wrote this post that was saying, okay, so Rocket Fuel is getting too much for me to handle on my own. It's taking up more and more of my time at the cost of things in my life. It's becoming a full-time job pretty much. So I'm starting something new from February. I'm not quitting Rocket Fuel, don't worry. It says, I give out a pull-up every month for contributing a link for potential content in the Rocket Fuel thread. And I'm hoping that the GMC will give me a grant um, starting next month. So I want to use $1,000 of that grant money every month to make a raffle for content providers. The raffle will be for everyone who has a pop for contributing that month. I will set five $200 prizes and that can be won every month. So how will you earn the contributor pops? You will get the pops providing five links that do not get covered in the show or three links that get covered in the show. I will make a spreadsheet every month and add your name to it depending on how much you contribute. Uh, I might refine the system after seeing what does and doesn't work and getting community feedback. The links you provide will have to be of a specific format for it to be counted. Um, I'll need three things. One, a link to the comment on Discord, the tweet, the DAO forum post or something else that's relevant. Two sentences about why this is important and should be covered. Where this information finishes, if it's a com com conversation, in some conversations you might have to provide multiple links with relevant points. So then I provide a link of what a submission might look like. Um, and then it says, I've always thought of Rocket Fuel as a community product and I cannot carry on with this unless all of us step up together to make it happen and the community steps up to help me. And I said, I'll start with this from Monday's episode. So then I had an example of Joe's like talking about the Proteus and then Sneaky sent a message and uh, Jasper sent messages and lots of community people have already started giving feedback, which has been absolutely amazing. And I'm so happy that the majority of today's episode was sourced using links that were provided to me by the community. So at the end of this paragraph over here, I said, I might refine this system after seeing what does and doesn't work and getting community feedback. So today I wrote this uh, poll in the Rocket Fuel thread. I said, how should I share grant money with contributors? I said, a raffle for people who submit a minimum amount of posts or $200 for each of the top five contributors. So the issue that I was having was um, in the original post, I said, you know, people who post three links that get covered, they'll get a, a raffle entry ticket. But the problem is like Jasper's already submitted three. So that means someone like Jasper might not submit any more for the rest of the month. So I made this poll and um, the majority, almost everyone who answered said raffle for people who submit a minimum number of posts. So I think what, what's come up with this discussion is two things. One, that $1,000 a month seems like too much. And two, that um, I should basically... Well, let, let's just talk through it. So but the main people that were responding were Shifrin and Kevster and Dondo. And they all made some really good points and they made some really funny points. And um, what they said was, first of all, that um, $1,000 might be too much. Um, but if I wanted to do $1,000, then maybe I could be a bit smarter about how I give it out. Um, and Shifrin says, honestly, I feel bad for draining you of $1,000 a month. I think a lot of people are willing to help and a smaller incentive would achieve similar results. And the issue that I responded by saying was, because I think Kevster said, just give a pop and that should be enough. And I've already been giving pops for contributors, but now I need people to be contributing a higher caliber. So that's the reason why... Um, that's the reason why I'm uh, I'm changing that. So Dondo said, you know, have you thought of hiring someone? And I said, it'd be like... a pretty much a part-time job um, and if that would someone that I feel felt was reliable then maybe I could give that person a thousand dollars a month instead of um, of uh, doing these raffles every month but that's something that I'm open to and then um, the 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 point that we kind of ended up at with this discussion oh yeah and also um, Lucille Burhuk dot ETH also um, gave some suggestions so thank you for that but where I'm kind of standing right now, and I'm more than happy to listen to more people um, 
giving feedback is setting up a kind of a leaderboard um, where people um, who get featured on the episode, their submissions get featured in the episode, will um, will get on the leaderboard and the top 20 people on that leaderboard will all get entry to the raffle and then 10 people from that 20 will um, win $100. So there'll be 10 prizes of $100, um, $1,000 a month, and only 20 people will be eligible for that raffle. And those 20 people will be the top 20 on the leaderboard of people who had comments that were featured in the episode. So I think that is a fair way of doing it. That's kind of where I'm standing right now. Um, however, like this is still subject to change. Um, I think that, um, yeah, Dondo's suggestion of leaderboarding it is, is a really good one and um, top 20 will get raffle tickets. Everyone will get a pop, but only twenty pe those 20 people will be um, eligible for uh, the price. So that's kind of where I'm standing right now. I really think that um, it will, yeah, and Shifrin and Kev, these do not count as your your uh, submissions for the month, by the way. <laughs> They're trying to game the system already. <laughs> so um, I think this is a really good system. Um, I'm gonna give it a few weeks to check out how it works maybe up to the end of February. Um, at that point, you know, I'll, I'll give the pop and I'll make a raffle depending on what we agree on. But I think it's a fair system and I think it's something that will help me a lot. And um, yeah, if I feel like uh, there's a huge gulf between people are helping like in the in the top 20 positions like if the top three or four people are doing like 10 times more work than the person like number five or six, then I might just set up rocket fuel internships um where people can just help me on a semi semi permanent basis and just get like a a salary but not really a salary but just as a uh, as a way of saying thank you okay let's move on from that to get to actual actual stuff now so here there's a protocol update from from maverick he says here hi everyone uh, it's been a while since we've had a, had a last snapshot vote we don't talk about that. Um, but uh, now we've gotten three live at once. As usual, it's important to know that node operators have their say on the future direction of Rocket Pool protocol at vote.rocketpool.net. By reading the vote summaries and respective RPIPs and voting to help each quorum. And then there's um, RPIPs right here, RPIP 16, how protocol settings will be optimized for Atlas and the upcoming Shanghai withdrawals hard fork. Um, RPIP 17, a set of self-limiting principles to ensure Rocket Pool cannot put Ethereum's health at risk. And RPIP 18, some minor housekeeping updates to the GMC. This is why we're 24 hours away from next bi-weekly fortnightly update, which is looking like it'll even be bigger than the last bumper edition. And the last one was a big bi-weekly update, so that's really amazing. And it says this means that we're around 36 hours away from next community call. Check the event section for the new slightly earlier time to accommodate our special guest from Miso Finance. Um, and yeah, then there's like some more updates. So now let's have a look at the votes. So here we have three votes that I have already voted on all three of them. And I voted to approve all three of them. Let's start with RPIP 16. So RPIP 16 says this vote specifies how settings will be modified in response to Atlas and the upcoming withdrawals fork. The settings will be changed to allow pent up demand to build up to the deposit pool in expectations of large supply, keep maximum APR drag in mind and allow easier motion of ETH from the RETH contract to the deposit pool. It doesn't impact burning too much and um, allow supply side to be paired uh, more rapidly to minimize unproductive protocol ETH. And this will be done by changing how much ETH sits in the ARTH ETH contract before overflowing into the deposit pool from 10% um, of our ETH TVL to 1%, changing the deposit pool size from 5,000 to 18,000. This size increase seems large. Please see the models from Noshua and Baldorf, why this is seen as a conservative increase. And then you can read the full RPIP as well. So, so far this has had 2,100 votes. The quorum is 5,200 votes. Everyone who has voted so far has voted in approval of this. So I think that's really great. I think um, once Atlas goes live, the demand for our ETH is going to be absolutely staggering. So us giving us like a rocket pool giving itself this runway of 18,000 ETH, I think is going to be absolutely tremendous in, um, in having like the most amazing single day in rocket pools history so far, I think, because a lot of, um, a lot of new people are going to start um, spinning up mini pool eights, but also once um, we get the chance to migrate from LEB, well, uh, mini pool sixteens to LEB eights, we'll 
see potentially hundreds of thousands of our ETH worth of demand available right there on day one, which will be absolutely amazing to see. So if we can start eating into that right away, um, I think Rocket Pool is going to be grow spectacularly from there. So I've voted for this. Um, other votes that have come through from Marso, Object Object, Romana, uh, Fornax, and others that have got large delegate amounts to them have voted already, which is really cool. Okay, let's go back to um, vote number two which is updating a grants management committee. This is actually RPIP 18. So um, this was uh, a few um, GMC changes, like changing the committee size from seven to nine, um, specifying how vacancies are handled in the future, calling for a vote for vacancies, uh, expecting, yeah, expecting two and grow from growing and one from Caledron stepping down, uh, changing reward cycles from two months to three months, because uh, it's a lot of work to do for uh, every two months removing the restriction around how many non-community members can be on the on the GMC and this was complicated by the rocket scientist or Dao C and um, in the end just allowing elections to guide as considered best simplest in discussion and then it says please read the full RPIP um, and this one will replace RPIP 15. So again here I voted in favor of this as a GMC member um, I think these are really good uh, suggestions and so far we've had 2.2 thousand votes 100% uh, people voting in support of that. So that's really fantastic. And finally, we have um, a vote that is literally going to send, um, this one is the one that's going to be really big for the Ethereum community as a whole. So it says self-limiting rocket pool, RPIP 17. This vote establishes a set of principles that PDAO will abide by guiding principles. Rocket pool will act in the best interest of Ethereum health. Rocket Pool will consider the impacts of its choices on Ethereum, both immediately and long-term. Rocket Pool will prefer to damage itself before endangering the stability of Ethereum. Rocket Pool's growth should be improving the decentralization of Ethereum, and Rocket Pool should limit itself if it detracts from it. Rocket Pool will give its node operators autonomy to make meaningful choices and to leave the Rocket Pool system if they find it unsatisfactory. E.g., we currently allow existing um, exiting without preconditions and mini pool upgrades are opt-in. Please read the full RPIP here. You can read discussions around this in the forum thread. So um, again, 1.9 thousand votes for this have gone through. 100% um, of votes have gone through towards self-limiting rocket pools growth if it starts to damage Ethereum. Um, again, object, fizz, um, Ramana and others have voted for this already, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and as far as I remember, we can have a look at the RPIP, but I think it says a soft cap goes into place if Rocket Pool um, reaches um, reaches sixteen percent, seventeen percent, I think, and then a hard cap goes into place at twenty two percent. So um, you can definitely look at the RPIP and and get yeah, it says Rocket Pool should hard limit at twenty two percent dominance. And then rocket pools should soft limit, start soft limiting at 16% dominance and do some more aggressively at greater RP dominance. E.g. introduce a 3% fee to mint our ETH, raising by 2 percentage points, 2% percent per percentage point of RP dominance, redirect 10% of PDAO budget, uh, PDAO income from supporting small to supporting small permissionless protocols, raising by 10 percentage point per rocket pool dominance so those are really really great things to see and things that i'm hugely supportive of so i'm really hoping that um all of these votes will go through successfully i'm not trying to swear your vote of course if you're not convinced by the things you know this is permissionless you can vote however you choose so thank you okay so the the self-limiting vote especially is particularly interesting because there was a comment from superfiz uh, sorry not from superfiz from vitalik buterin um, that happened four days ago on, on a Reflex forum. So um, the title was, Can Oracles Double as Co-Stakers? How Rye-like Systems Might Safely Support Staked ETH? So this point in this post, uh, Vitalik was talking about staked ETH, supporting things like Rye and other things. And one of the comments that came up was quite interesting because um, Danny, uh, I'm not sure which Danny that is, maybe it's Danny... Hoffman, I'm not sure. Uh, he says, why ST ETH? Our ETH is more decentralized. But it doesn't matter which Danny was. So Vitalik replied by saying, my concern with our ETH is similar to my concern with the first Strawman idea that if anyone wanted to 51% attack Ethereum, they would start by spinning up a lot of our ETH staking nodes and they would only need N times N 
16 times n eth instead of 32 times n eth. So um, I think Vitalik has... Yeah, okay, I'm not going to... I, I'll just leave that at that. That's fine. So Vitalik was basically um, kind of skeptical of um, how Rocket Pool might work in this situation. Of course, there are other considerations to have, but I'm not going to comment on those right now because... Yeah, um, other people can talk to Vitalik about those. But it says, uh, Fornax says, we should let the man know we're voting to limit ourselves before harming Ethereum's health. And um, then what happened is people started tweeting about um, about this vote and mentioning Vitalik in that vote to let him know that, um, let me see if I can find an example of a tweet, uh, to let him know that, you know, we're doing that. So Shifrin here, he says, um, with this later pop latest proposal to self-limit rocket pool pro proves is acting in the best interest of ethereum's health it's not just about money it's about supporting a technology we can all use together in the future vitalik butrin would be proud so a lot of people were kind of tagging vitalik in these comments about uh, this the vote so far and of course you know it's still got another while to run but um it's looking really healthy for rocket pool right now which is fantastic okay so we talked about that already and next is um this tweet uh, from uh, Nixo, um, who says, absolutely wild how different two protocols votes can look when one community is active and invested in the long-term health of the chain and the other is there for dominance and short-term gains. And Nixo then replies to a post by saying, the funniest part about this tweet is that implied Lido has a community. So here there's two uh, um, snapshot votes, one from Lido saying, should Lido consider self-limiting? And then the vote was, no, don't self-limit, 99.8. 1% of voters with the LDO token and yes self limit 0.19% um, of voters and then uh, the rocket pool snapshot vote you know self limiting rocket pool and for 100% against 0% so it's just a completely opposite ethos of the two protocols the two projects and the people who are in those and one is li aligned with ethereum and the best interests of ethereum and the other is not so yeah you can you can see that from there Okay, so going back a step and looking at the votes themselves, um, there's there was a discussion that kind of came up over the weekend about uh, delegates of votes. So Shifrin said, people who uh, delegate to you can still vote themselves, right? Uh, do a lot of them end up voting? And um, Kev says, no, that wouldn't be delegating. And Romana says they can. And um, um, he says also delegates cannot vote and then why would you delegate then and then technically speaking not morally and people saying that doesn't make a whole lot of sense and yeah there was some confusion about um voting power um so it's like sneaky says so i can delegate all my voting power to romana then romana can vote using my delegated power and i can also vote using my delegated power um and that was a question about like is that is that can happen and Valdov says overwriting is a great feature in my opinion lets you ensure a vote when passionate um, and Kev says in that case I might uh, well delegate to someone super smart and um, Sneaky says I thought Romana meant double voting and uh, then Romana saying about how it should work people with effective RPL can sign up on delegates.rocketpool.net to become delegate uh, other node operators can set their delegates to people from A and in that case can't vote themselves C people in A have to vote on everything can't set delegates how it actually is actually this one might be correct that people can uh, delegate people who set the delegates to anything can also vote themselves and then delegates also might not vote so um there was a lot of confusion about um, what um, was working and uh, Waldorf says I think B is uh, a good feature that um, then they won't be able to vote themselves or yeah but people can set their delegate uh, to anything and also can vote themselves um, so even now me reading back on this is kind of confusing <laughs> but um, yeah let me let me see what it was that the the ending part of this like i think i've got it right here um sorry yeah so um let's just go back a little bit yeah you just pick good delegates jasper says vote for bernie of course always vote for bernie um if you're not going to pay attention then why bother caring if a delegate is voting or not um 
and the Romana says write in RPIP and it's a strict improvement especially if you are thoughtful in delegating to someone active and responsible and uh, Invis says yeah just pick good delegates and um, <laughs> Romana says I'll be uh, actively and responsibly, responsibly copying Nashua and Waldorf and uh, Sneaky says when voting cartels and always I think that's called agreeing so uh, Sneaky says everything's working expected and Invis says always has been and yeah so <laughs> i'm still kind of lost on exactly when you can and can't vote but yeah if you want to vote, delegate your vote to someone go to um, delegate.rocketpool.net if you want to vote yourself then go vote yourself but um yeah i've i've won everything but i'm not set up as a delegate maybe i should do that okay okay so i talked about this odao thread on friday's episode and how it was gargantuan and how it was huge and there was so much stuff in there so langas did something really amazing and he got a lot of support for this and he got like the king uh, emoji he says finally got through reading the thread so he read the whole thread he says it's late in our day but i have a note of all the que of the questions raised we are replacing our stand-up tomorrow with a workshop to determine what the team can do to address there have been some good suggestions and discussion so let's take a step back and talk about this a little bit. So um, on Friday, we talked about how there seemed like there was some animosity between different groups and people talking. And uh, I think people were kind of talking past each other. And then Jasper made a comment about how the the Odao thread has kind of turned into something discussing like more philosophical and existential issues, which was really great. And like, you know, the conversation has gotten really productive. So then Langer's uh, reading it and now is going to replace the stand-up. So for those of you who don't know, a stand-up is like a meeting where all the people in the team get together and just kind of talk about what they're doing that day or in general and what they're working on. So everyone's kind of abreast of what everyone's doing. So the stand-up will be replaced today with the workshop to talk about what the teams can do to address the issues around the ODAO. I think this is really productive. I think this is fantastic. I just wish that um, maybe a, like team member, or uh, a community member or two could be involved in that as well. I think that would be really great. But hey, at least this is a step in the right direction. So I'm hoping good things come from this. Okay, next we have this amazing update from rocketscan.io. So let's have a look what Pateris is saying. Patera says new attestation performance update from Rocket Scan. You can see Rocket Pool validator attestation performance from Mini Pool node operator and all Rocket Pool nodes, which is really amazing. And it says one operator view. Let's have a look at this. So this is um, Thomas's um, node, and if you go to Rocket Scan now, you can see Thomas's node is right here. It has 921 Mini Pools. It's proposed nearly 5,000 blocks. It has 41,426 ETH. Of value locked on the protocol um it's you can get all this information from um rocket scan which is absolutely amazing um and like i totally love this website i've like championed it so much and i really really love it but now this is a great update that we have so you can see here that thomas started staking in um in december 20th 2021 hey just 10 days before i did and since then, his performance has been mostly light green, not dark green. Um, it takes the average of each day and how many, um, um, how many uh, attestations were missed on that day. So, for example, on February 18th, 19th and 20, it seems like, um, yeah, like on, on February 19th, um, Thomas had zero attestation. So I guess his node was down. But then his performance since then has been pretty good. He's been um, successful in like 99 plus percent of his attestations. Um, and there's like seven days number. So in the last seven days, it's 99.81, which is fantastic. 28 days, 9.931, um, 99.31 and all time 98.96, which is really great. Um, so that's a really cool feature. And then um, so you can see that for any node on, on Rocket Pool and you can see by mini pool 2 instead of just by node view and then there's a list of the best uh, node operators and most of them are all nodes so all nodes have an up low uh, up rate pretty much of 100% uh, which is really amazing and um, this operator joined with their one mini pool on all nodes has not missed a single one of their 75000 attestations in over 300 days so this is really, really cool stuff. It's a fantastic update to um, 
to rocket scan and then there's the opposite person here as well which is a node operator who's been down so they had some issues in february 2022 as they joined then they got things up and running and working and then from june their performance just collapsed and from august i think basically the yeah they they've just given up on their node so <laughs> that's kind of sad but um yeah, it's really cool that uh, Pateris is adding these features and it's always adding new features. Um, I'm really excited to see the stuff that um, he does going forward with this website. Okay, so the next thing I want to give a quick shout out to is Romana made a thread about a UK meetup. So a bunch of people from the UK are part of the Rocket Pool community and they are... Um, they're unable to come to East Denver, but they still want to meet up. So a few of them that were in in the UK, they've they've um, made this thread that you can uh, check in on. Um, I think the date that they want to meet up on is February twenty sixth, um, which is right around the time the Denver Build Week is happening. And they were talking about meeting up at Rocket Pool, which is the thing that Reloaded shared a couple of days ago. Um, but it seems like they're going to end up with London. However, I'm not exactly sure if that's what's going to happen uh, because I didn't read through the thread. But um, it's really great that they're meeting up and I'm I'm really excited. So it says, essentially, what city should we go to? London, Bristol, Birmingham, Cambridge, Nottingham, Sheffield, Leeds. Um, I think any further up and exclude all the southerners. So the vote seems to be going towards Birmingham. Um which is a which is the second biggest city in England. So that's really cool. Um, I don't know how much you can like count on this vote, but there's a whole lot of people. Let's see some of the names of the people who are attending. Um, wait. So Romana said London. Let me see if I can just see. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so it's basically at the moment it's only. Romana who's uh, commented on that poll so yeah go check that poll and vote on it and pick a place to to meet so yeah I, I think it should be um should be a fun fun um meetup for people um I've loved the rocket pool meetups that I've already done they've been amazing so I hope you guys in England have a great time with that or the UK I guess okay the next thing we have is a tweet from Jasper and Jasper says warning to everyone and this is, um, a, there's been a surge of scams around Rocket Pool. I made this the lead story in an episode last week. It says there are fake websites, Twitter accounts, contracts, and more. You can verify the contract address in the Rocket Pool Discord under the re resources channel, and then how you can get there. So there's a tweet, um, sorry, um, a post from the Rocket Pool this, uh, Twitch. Rocket Pool Reddit here, where he says, lost my R Ethan MetaMask. Hello guys, I'm really new to this. I had my R Ethan MetaMask. I clicked on the webpage of Rocket Pool. I saw a link to MetaMask. I clicked it because I thought that's how you link both accounts. But I see now on MetaMask a transaction has been made where all my R ETH has been sent to, and then there's a contract address. On, Eth on Etherscan, I see this address as the official one for Rocket Pool. Is there anything I can do to get my R ETH back? So I think this person basically, um, got fished um with a fake website and they lost their they lost their um their r eth which is really sad and um then people kind of retweeting this and uh, reposting this so people can see it and um it's just it's really sad that this is happening so please 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 be super diligent interacting with any 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 um website twitter anything with your wallet um ideally keep things in the hard wallet keep it separately um yeah please practice good hygiene and please be careful because it's getting bad okay next we have this tweet from De uh, delphi digital who says STE has a rebasing token where the number of tokens held increases to reflect accumulated staking yield uh, coinbase eth and r eth avoid um, reward bearing tokens where the value of the tokens held increases to reflect accumulated staking yield and then uh, the frax eth reward bearing token complemented by um, their uh, pool that they have so there's a little uh, infographic here with um, the different kinds of tokens and their information and the one thing that's really interesting is that you can't quite see in the bottom of the picture in the video is that lido has 27 node operators coinbase has one node operator but i think it's actually more than that but that's what we know of 
uh, Rocket Pool has 1,096. It's more than 2,000 now. Um, Stakewise has four and Frax has one. So um, there's definitely um, some big different. There's a big difference in in those tokens. Stakewise with version three should be adding uh, decentralized permissionless uh, node operators as well, which would be really great to see. But um, I think this this is a nice chart. And just seeing that node operator number is just astronomical compared to the other node operators for protocols. Okay, next we have this um, post from Joe where he says, I'm literally making cables at the moment. He was talking to me and um, yeah, there's like a picture of a cable. And then he had this really cool, um, really cool image that I wanted to share with you all about um, the Proteus. So... Um, hopefully you can see most of it it's a breakdown of the whole of the proteus so it's got all the different screws in there heat sinks the rock 5b board the fan and mount case top case bottom front panel lights and cables the uh, rtc battery uh, power ethernet heat sinks ram heat sink cpu heat sink power supply and m2 and m3 screws so um that's a really cool image just to show you the breakdown of the whole of the proteus and um I really like that Joe shared this, so that was awesome. Okay, another thing that Joe's been sharing, sharing is front plates for the Proteus that people have been making. He says, uh, all right, guys, we have a new contender for most creative front plate by 0x Rosowski. And then um, he hasn't etched it yet, but this is what it's going to look like. It says uh, category crypto anarchist manifesto.md just as the technology of printing reduced the power of medieval guilds and the power of social structure cryptologic methods will fundamentally alter the nature of corporations and government interference in economic transactions just as an invention like barbed wire made possible the fencing off of vast um, ranches and farms thus altering forever the concepts of land and property rights the discovery out of arcane branch of mathematics will be the wire clippers which dismantle the barbed wire around intellectual property and then that's the zero x Roskowski's ethos which is really cool so people are doing some really awesome things with their front plates i still haven't decided what i'm doing with my front plate because i just have the rocket fuel with the logo at the moment like that me you know with the with my hands on the face but um i think i might make something a little bit more interesting than that so let's see some really creative ones. I really like Wartius's, uh, Wars Wartius, which is fantastic. Okay, so next we have this tweet from Anthony Sassano. He says, you're worried about a possible ETH dip uh, or ETH price dump when uh, staking withdrawals are enabled. I'm spinning up new solo validators and rocket pool mini pools every other day. We are not the same. So I really love how Anthony Sassano now is using rocket pool mini pools in the same breath as Ethereum solo validators. Um, it's so great to see how much Anthony is championing uh, Rocket Pool and just how comfortable people are getting talking about Rocket Pool in the same breath as solo staking. It's not just um, um, Sasano, like other people are doing the same thing. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Sasano here because this is really cool that, um, first of all, that like, he's doing that, like congratulations on having so much ETH, but also on, um, also on like sharing positive stories about um rocket pool so that's really really cool um my browser is giving me the beach ball of death so i'm not sure what's going on let's have a look the next story is um about sometimes you get um yeah, i'm sorry about this i don't know what's wrong i can't pause my screen what what happened here let me move Okay, yeah, my browser is just being, I don't know what's wrong with it. Monday's episode is always like this because there's just so many tabs. So the next story is um, a new, potentially new ODAO member. So in the Ethereum R&D Discord, there is a person called Micah who works for Aragon and is a developer with Aragon. Um, as you might know, we already have some um, of the client teams as ODAO members. So Aragon is not uh, is not on the not on the ODAO at the moment, but um, the tweet uh, the sorry the the screenshot was of uh, Yorick talking to uh, Micah about uh, potentially joining the ODAO, and then the conversation went to DMs. So I'm not sure where the conversation went, but I'm not sure what's going on. I'm just going to 
stop recording and start recording again hi everyone sorry about that so um i was having technical issues so as i said um pateris shared a screenshot of the eth r d discord and here there's yorick who is an odal member saying michael your name come up came up in an informal chat among rocket pool odal members we're pondering about adding an additional member i'm happy to share the criteria we've come up with i know you are quite critical of lsds in general do you want to entertain the idea of becoming a member of the rocket pool odal and Micah says, let's move to DM rather than public channel, since this seems like something no one but the two of us will care about following. My DMs are open. And Yorick says, sent you a friend request, since Discord tells me that I'm not worthy to DM you. So I think um, that's really interesting. Uh, Micah, for those of you who don't know, is a very contrarian person, I want to say, politely. Um, it seems like whenever there's any position that... Um, you know, is presented on the all devs call. Uh, Micah seems to be one who kind of presents the opposite side of that. Um, like recently, Micah has been one who's saying that maybe withdrawals should be delayed or withdrawals aren't important when the whole community is kind of like the opposite position to that. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where that conversation goes. That might be a little bit of alpha basically for uh, people to um, chase up on later. But um, hey, we shared it here first. Well, I guess... Uh, people talked about it in Discord first, but I shared it with you all first. <laughs> so next we have this really interesting thing from um, from Romana. He says, family split a contract and then there's a link to GitHub for some person and their two kids to share RPL rewards from a single node. So let me show you um, what the person said. So it's 10 tech. He says, wak wak attack might be worth a shout out to Romana for providing his time and smarts to help me. He's written a smart contract to allow me to split a portion of my mini pools RPL to wallets I've created for my children. He's an absolute legend. So this is a really interesting idea, right? Because if you are getting um, rewards on your um, RPL, on your node, when you withdraw that those rewards from your node, they go to your um, your wallet, your withdrawal address. However, you can change that withdrawal address to make it into a splitter wallet. So anytime any RPL comes into that, it will get divided out following a formula. So for 10 tech, um, I guess, you know, um, a portion will come to, um, yeah, he allowed me to split a portion of my mini pools RPL to wallets I've created for my children. So this is like kind of think of it as a savings account that um, has been set up using this contract. So it's really cool. And then Tentech says, I'm not sure for helping me review the code before it was deployed. Rocket Pool has a fantastic community with some very helpful members. So it seems like it seems like Raman is doing some really, really cool things out there at the moment. It's setting up the shrimp marriage with me. Um, and now doing the family splitter contract. And of course, it's all on GitHub. It's all open source. So you can definitely go and check that out. But um, it's a really, really cool like little thing that... Um, that Amana has going on, so good job. Okay, next we have this tweet from Mao, who says, uh, Rocket Pool changed the staking game in 2021 by reducing the requirements for running an Ethereum validator from 32 ETH to 16 ETH. With the Atlas, Atlas upgrade just around the corner, they are dropping it yet again down to 8 ETH, and RPL is the entry ticket. You are not prepared. And then there's a, a, a caption of, from Meme, says, hold your RPL bags tight, uh, rocket pools eight eth mini pools are coming so the one thing that i want to talk about is right here which says rpl is the entry ticket so as we know you stake your eth you get eth rewards that's great you stake your rpl you get rpl rewards however staking through rocket pool with um with the mini pools that we have when you deposit your eth not only do you get eth rewards but you also earn a commission from the R ETH that is minted because of the ETH that you are staking. Now, what does this mean? This means that you get um, X percentage more than solo staking by running a Rocket Pool node and your RPL rewards are on top of that. However, say that you are an RPL mini and an ETH maxi, you don't want to hold any RPL. So what do you do in that situation? So at that point, if you are staking for the long term, then you can think of RPL as your entry ticket to high ETH commission. What does this mean? This means in your mind, you could enter and make a new mini pool or set your node 
um, at 10% RPL for any pools that you create. And then you can, in your mind, think that the RPL will go to zero. However, that extra commission, the extra 15% that you're earning from ETH stakers will be paid back and will cover the cost of the RPL that you deposited in the beginning. I think it takes four or five years to do that. But if you count any rewards in the meantime that you get from RPL, then it happens a lot quicker. But if you set up your node and RPL goes to zero the next day, just from ETH commissions that you'll be getting, as long as you keep your node alive, you'll be getting, um, you'll be able to pay back the RPL cost that you put in from the beginning. So it really does become an entry ticket if you decide on staying in, in the, um, if you decide to stake for multiple years. After that, of course, then, you know, you, you might have different, um, criteria that you want to measure your investment by but just as it going to zero i think this is really smart and i don't think the wider community is quite caught on to this fact yet because then that extra reward will go on for in perpetuity right you get that forever so it's really really smart okay next we have this thing from Vale who um says fizz i hope you you aren't chatting and driving to your mailbox um and fizz says oh my god i got it I'm so sorry, it's been a whirlwind. I also got my Proteus, so I've been in the whole time. So what did Fizz get? So Vale recently started printing ticket uh, stickers that uh, can go on like a laptop, all these different places. And the, I think they're like mostly Ethereum inspired slash POAP style stickers. Um, so Fizz was um, Vale's first customer and got his um, batch of stickers. And Fizz says they're awesome and that I'm sorry for slacking, I didn't open them until late last night. And then Vail says, no worries, just was just uh, trolling. DM me your feedback when you have the time. And then Fizz replied by saying, they're extremely nice, very good quality stickers, high quality images, and easy to peel. The procurement chain is perfect. As we discussed, my only struggle was the order form. So um, it seems like Vail stickers are working quite nicely. So if you want to get some stickers uh, that are Rocket Pool slash Ethereum inspired, reach out to Vale and they can hook you up, which is really cool. Okay, the next comment we had here was from uh, Dondo sharing something from the benefactor. So the benefactor says three steps, DM, uh, three steps, DM me telling me why you deserve some RPL. I reward Rocket Pool work ahead of everything else. Send me your address. If I like what I see, I will send you RPL. So I think the benefactor has still has RPL to send out. Um, I don't have access to the benefactor's address. Otherwise, we could have seen how much they have left. But I think it's somewhere like 200 RPL left, something along those kind of numbers. So, hey, if you uh, feel like you deserve some RPL, um, hit up the benefactor in the DMs, and I guess you'll get some RPL. Last time, and I think it's happening this time as well, is not a single person was turned away. So um, message them. You'll get something. It's free money. Uh, but like, like the benefactor says here, I reward rocket pool work ahead of everything else and i think fizz was encouraging people to stake it so maybe staking as well so um reach out and get some free rpl for yourself okay next finally we have this post from ken who says everyone make sure that you one apply if you haven't already applied and he's talking about east denver he says the people organizing it are getting ready to close applications due to the large registration numbers already received they haven't stated a closing date but don't wait do it ASAP if you're on the fence about attending in four weeks time. It's in four weeks time. It's so cool. Um, and then there's a link to applying for a ticket. Two, if you did apply, make sure that you claim your ticket and acceptance. And then there's a link to the WeLook.io site. If you do not hear back yet, if you've not heard back yet and cannot claim, um, email them, support at ethdenver.com. And finally, due to the large number of attendees, expected ETH Denver is calling for additional volunteers to help them crew ETH Denver. Lots of neat opportunities. And then there's a link to events.ethdenver.com slash volunteer. They're promising exclusive perks for doing it. So if I wasn't volunteering all my time at the Rocket Pool uh, booth, that's something that I would definitely be doing. But um, on that note, please, please, please go and apply because I think it'll be really cool. And um, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. I want to give a shout out to all the people that made today's episode possible. So um, there was Sneaky and Jasper and actually, let me just go back and do this because um, I want to definitely make sure I give credit to a lot of the people that like helped contribute to today's episode. So we have um, Sneaky and Jasper and more Jasper and 
Schifrin and Mighty M um, and Romana um, shared a link for us because we now got six mini pools on our shrimp uh, marriage. Uh, Vale, um, Schifrin again and Mao who had three entries and doing some really good stuff and Romana again and Vale again and Pieter and Fulagini, I'm sorry, I definitely pronounced that really badly, and Dondo and Kevster, so and Shifrin again, um, and Dondo again, and yeah, like, uh, and also here we have uh, Lucille Burhuk, Daith, um, so lots of lots of really uh, Kevster again, like amazing people doing really cool work. Um, I think that's everyone who volunteered for this episode and helped get it out. So thank you to all of you. Um, I will make a leaderboard. Um, I don't know how formal or informal it will be. Maybe Hodger can make a site for me, which would be amazing, and get a raffle ticket with that. And maybe Hani Abu can do something. That would be really amazing. Get a, uh, get a raffle ticket if, you, if, either, if either of you are watching. Um, we can make a leaderboard, and then whoever, the top 20 people who contribute can get raffle tickets and win a hundred dollars a ten of them will win a hundred dollars so i think that'll be really really exciting going forward and um yeah thank you for everyone who volunteered uh, tomorrow's episode we already have a couple from um Schifrin and kevster already on there so um i'm really excited about doing this wait it was definitely kevster i said i'll cover this tomorrow but yeah anyway thank you everyone for watching today's episode has gone really long but that's monday but um and we're trying out new things but hopefully from tomorrow's we'll be back to our usual length with our usual amazing content so thank you everyone i hope you all have a great start to your week and i will see you all soon bye